Hello, everyone. Hi there. Welcome to Hello. the gift. Hello. Hi. Oh, love your backdrop, sir. Thank you very much. How are you all? Good to see you all here. Great very to good. see you. Hello, good to see you. Hi, Julia. How are you doing? Very, very good. All right, Christina, why don't you right. take over? You know what to tell him to do, right? <laughs> yeah, well, welcome. And could you present yourself, please? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Kausu Javi. I am a Gambian by nationality. Um, I study information system from the University of the Gambia. And I am the founder of Kids in Technology Gambia. So kids in technology basically is about, it's a foundation that trains kids on computational thinking skills, coding, robotics, and internet of things particularly. Yes, so that is a brief introduction about myself. And I have a PowerPoint presentation to delve more into my topic, uh, which is the what industrial revolution and education systems. Okay, show us please. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, so there we go. This is myself, uh, Kausu Javi. My name is Kausu Javi, like I said. Um, I'm the founder of Kitsin Technology. And the topic I want to discuss today is what industrial revolution and education system. Um, so a brief introduction of Kitsin Technology once again. Kitsin Technology is a foundation in the Gambia that trains children robotics and Internet of Things particularly. And this is our logo. Um, uh, so the topic today is what industrial revolution and education systems. So, excuse me, let me just. Okay, so the industrial revolutions was the transition from creating goods by hands to using machines. So the four industrial revolution stages are. The first industrial revolution, uh, whereby uh, people, the area where people use coal to generate uh, power, sort of, and that was like around 1765. And you come to the second industrial revolution, the gas, the proposal was more on gas, that was in 1870. And the third industrial revolution, the focus was more on the electronics and nuclear power. Uh, in 70, uh, 1969. So the last one is the fourth industrial revolution where the focus was on internet and renewable energy resources. And that was just in uh, 2000. So the topic will be more on the fourth industrial revolution. So the first industrial revolution, uh, the, the original industrial revolution transforms our economy from agriculture to industry. So processing become mechanized and products were manufactured for the first time. So during this period, the discovery of coal and its mass extraction, as well as the development of the steam engine and metal fogging completely changed the way goods were produced and exchanged. So inventions such as spinning machines and looms that make fabrics where they're in appearance. So in those days, these were the tools that people used to manufacture things in the industry and the factory levels. So when you come down here, you see the picture of how in the olden days, how people use uh, the machines and the implements, the, the tools they used to manufacture and to generate electricity, okay? As you can see the loom here, and uh, the spinning machine to, uh, for making clots and other things. You know, you see the coal here, this is the coal. In those days, people use it to generate uh, power. 
you know, for industrial purpose. And then you see the steam engine here as well. You know, so these are things that we are used in the fourth industrial revolution. So now let's go to the second industrial revolution. So in the second uh, industrial revolution, <clears throat> there is a, a, a small changes, you know, when it comes to how people do the processing and the tool that people rely on to do the manufacturing of things, goods. Okay, so uh, as the first industrial revolution was uh, driven by coal, like I said before in the previous slide, the second revolved around the discovery of electricity. Okay, gas and oil. So the invention of the combustion en engines went hand in hand with these fuel sources. Both steel and chemical based products entered the market during this time. So development in communication technology got a jump start with telegraphs and telephones. Transportation grew by leaps and bounds with the invention of planes and cars. Mechanical production grew in speed to the advance of mass production. So that was uh, in second industrial revolution. So as the world goes, you know, transformation, you know, start taking place and then people start changing their way of life, the production link, and then, you know, the how uh, energy is, is being produced and all those things. So from, from the second industrial revolution, we delve into the third industrial revolution. Sorry, this is these are the pictures of the the tool that people use in the second industrial revolution. Okay, you have the tele uh, the, the telephone and the telegrams. These are the olden days things that people used to communicate. You know, in those days, long time. Okay, the mode of communication channel. So from there. We quickly jump into the third industrial revolution. So what happens in the third industrial revolution? There, the, the focus, now development started taking place gradually. Now, uh, as things evolve, you know, people think and produce more uh, cool things that will make our jobs effective and efficient. So in the third industrial revolution, after another 100 years, after the, the second industrial revolution, then the nuclear energy and electronics entered the landscape. Okay, so nuclear power began in Europe, uh, grew in both uh, Great Britain and the United States, and as well as Asia. So in, in that, that was in 70s and 20th 20, uh, 20, uh, 20 century, uh, through partial automation, using memory programmable control and the computer. So as you can see, you know, now the world is evolving, things are changing, you know, innovation also start taking place. So since the introduction of these technologies, we are now able to automate an entire production process without human assistance. Okay, known example of these are robots that perform program sequence without human intervention, okay? So now development start taking place gradually. So when you look at this other place here, you see the picture of the sample of third industrial revolution, the, where the, 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 uh, you, you don't see human intervention to that extent, but then you see robots, you know, playing role in the manufacturing industry. Like you see here in the picture, robots are fixing parts of the, the, the car. You know, so is is another advancement. Okay, so moving away from the third industrial revolution, then we quickly delve into the fourth industrial revolution. So the fourth industrial revolution basically is the main topic, you know, that I want us to talk about. So in the fourth industrial revolution, because it's the present, this is the present. The fourth industrial revolution, we talk about the internet and renewable energy resources, and that is started around 2000. So it says, as we continue moving through the fourth industrial revolution, we see a shift to renewable energy, such as solar and wind. However, the momentum comes not from the shift in energy, 
but from the acceleration of digital technology as well. The internet and the digital world mean a real connection between more and more components of production line. So both sides and outside facility work. So as a development of the industrial internet of things, uh, cloud technology that's cloud computing, artificial intelligence, AI continues, a virtual world will merge with the physical world. So as you can see now in uh, our work environment, uh, there are many changes. You see human beings and machines are now trying to work together to produce something. Now it's a combination of, in the, in, in the olden days, like we track from the first industrial revolution, the second industrial to third. But the fourth industrial revolution, this is where human beings and machine come together to produce something. Where we talk about the internet of things, the cybersecurity, the cloud computing, and then you name them, the web technology, okay? So now uh, we have a lot of real-time experience, like what we are doing right now, you know, the Zoom conversation, the Zoom meeting, and all those things, uh, real-life things that happen now in the uh, 21st century, and that is the fourth industrial revolution. So now let's delve more. Here is the picture of the fourth industrial revolution. So we see robots, okay? Now robots are taking seats. When it comes to our manufacturing, in the hospital, in agriculture, the, the, the climate changes, and almost all endeavors that human do, all human activities, okay, involve one or more of these things here. We talk about Internet of Things. So Internet of Things also is taking seats, whereby people are trying to automate things that people use in their house, like the, the car, in the fridges, and then so many other things in the world now are now connected to the internet. They all have the IP addresses. Most of them have IP addresses that you can use to transmit information and then to control them at ease. Okay, now we talk about the argumentative reality, the big data, the 3D printing also, because now we see the houses, people are using the 3D printing houses, build a full-fledged house with 3D printing devices. That is all in the fourth industrial revolution, okay? Then we talk about the simulation also and cybersecurity because we know hackers are all around the place now. So the demand of cybersecurity also is increasing in an exponential way. So all these things are fourth industrial revolution facilities, 21st century. Okay, let's just come to the summary part of each of these things. Now, if you look at the picture here, you see the first industrial revolution, the, sorry, first industrial revolution, where we talk about mechanizations, water power, steam engines, and then, you know, the, the things I mentioned previously just now. And we move to the second industrial revolution, you see the cars, manufacturing of cars and the airplanes, you know, and, and, and all those things, the mass production assemb assembly lane. Okay, then you we go to third industrial revolution, where now we have computer, the power of computer is gradually uh, infiltrating, is gradually coming to that of human civilization. Okay, then uh, in the third, we have the computer automation. Then in the, the fourth one, that is where we have a lot of things. We have a lot of things like cybersecurity and like I mentioned previously, cloud computing, internet of things, AI, web technology, and so many other things. Okay, so this is the developmental stage from one stage to another. So what I will do, uh, the previous slides, we have to connect these things, you know, and then see, we assess to see whether if what kids are learning today have a correlation to what they will ex expect in their time of production, okay? So let's quickly move to um, more on uh, fourth industrial revolution because we are the, that is the, the focus, the, the topic, the focal topic here, okay? 
So the fourth industrial revolution, also called uh, the 4IR or the Industrial 4.0, conceptualized rapid changes to technology, industries, and societal patterns and persons in the first century due to increasing interconnectivity and smart automation. Okay? Yes. So from there, we talk about education system. One of the biggest crises that the world is facing today, the education system. Okay? So if you look at this picture here, you can understand that something is happening here. It's just a mass production way of doing things, a road memorization way of doing things, and the assembly line of doing things. So most of the things that kids are learning in schools are now obsolete. Does not have any correlation to the fourth industrial revolution demand. Okay, so like you see here in the picture here, most of the thing is like the, the, the curiosity, okay? And the intuitiveness and the ability for a child to create has been limited, okay? Because a child is just fixed in one particular classroom for corner of the classroom, whilst the teacher is feeding the child, you know, a, a standardized curriculum content, okay? Okay. When there's a lot of a lot of possibilities, a lot of resources out there for kids to learn and prepare for the for industrial demands. Okay. So let's delve more into the education system here. So we talk about the advent of the fourth industrial revolution, as we discussed recently, uh, has disrupted the education system nowadays because. Our education system is based on the factory model and mass production style, which were needed in the first and the second industrial revolution. And now we are in the fourth industrial revolution. So many children, particularly in Africa, are learning things that are already not applicable in the real world applications. Because if you look at the curriculums in Africa, for me, I taught in many schools, many uh, public schools, and I taught in private private schools as well. But if you look at the curriculum, the content that kids are learning, and you compare it to the, the fourth industrial revolution, the way technology is progressing, there is a mismatch. There's a, a big gap, a big difference. So what will happen? There, there will be a big problem if the world don't come together to reform the education system or to remedy the education system so much with the fourth industrial revolution department. Okay, so it says here, uh, however, this factor created a gap. Yes, a big gap between jobs and unskilled labor in the market. Okay, so because the rates of intelligence that are not human are increasingly every day, such as AI, many jobs are becoming redundant today. We have like millions of jobs that are needed today. We have millions of jobs that are imagined that are coming every day. So how can we prepare kids for them to have a long lasting education or a long lasting knowledge that will help them thrive in the fourth industrial revolution period? That is one of the biggest questions. Okay, so let's quickly move to the other part here. So we said the poor education system. Let's talk about the poor education system and the cause, the effect of the poor education system. You know, because like I said, most of our education systems are aligned to the previous industrial revolution demands. Let's say the first industrial revolution, the second type. And those things are no more existing. So why preparing kids for those things? There is a question. So the effect is here on employment because if children spend their valuable time and resources learning things that those will correlate to the fourth industrial revolution, at the time of their production, they will be unemployed. They will not have a job, okay? 
because there will be a mismatch of skills. The skills that the industries and factories are looking for does not correlate to the thing that the, the kid. So we talk about when, 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 and uh, the rate of and unemployment is, is increasing and exponentially. What happened? The dependency ratio also tend to be high. Okay. So we talk about the, the, the increase in the crime rate. Also, when people don't have jobs, they don't have a place to earn living, you know, it, it encourages a lot of young people to join gangs, you know, to steal and commit crime in order for them to live. So all this is caused by poor education system. Okay. And another point is poor graduates, because I see so many people with the bachelor's degree. They, they, they graduate from universities, but at the end of the day, they don't have the practical expertise to be able to work in industries and factories. They just have papers. Okay, so most of the most of the curriculum and most of our teaching methodologies are optional, are not needed in in in, in this this century. Okay, so also we have post standard of living. Yeah, so it also costs post standard of living, of course. If someone is not well equipped to earn living and all those things, what will happen? Your standard of living will be poor. You will have a poor well being. Okay, so all these are the repercussions. Likewise, you talk about waste of time in school. Some people spend a lot of time in school, some 12 years, some four, some three. But at the end of the day, when your head is full of skills that are needed in the first industrial or the second industrial, you know, when you're here, when you learn those skills, and now we are in the 21st century. So there will be a lot of mismatch, your time will waste that. Because now I see so many people and I meet with so many people who confronted me. They told me that they want to learn skills and they already have their bachelor's degree. Some people, they have their high school certificates, but yet they come and then, ask for uh, the skills, like the first industrial revolution skills and all those things, you know, because the companies, it, it is very, very hard for them to have jobs in the companies and, and, and factories, you know? So all this is because of the poor education system, uh, one of the biggest crises that the world is having today. Okay, so let's talk about this one. Yeah, so uh, the topic uh, the, is what kids should learn to treat in the fourth industrial revolution. We talk about the problem. Now let's talk about the solution. What can the world do in order for kids to learn skills that are relevant for the fourth industrial revolution? Excuse me. Thank you. So we talk about the, fund, for, for, uh, the, fund, the foundational literacy. This is very, very important. So kids should learn uh, how students will apply core skills to everyday life, everyday tasks. By learning literacy skills should be high. Numeracy skill, scientific literacy, ICT literacy skills using one of the softwares I recommend for schools to adopt is GCompress. Decompress is a software that I use often and it helps me a lot. It helps to transform the life of so many children to read and write because the software, it helps to improve the numeracy and literacy skills for kids. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about the competency skills. This skill also is very, very relevant. Kids nowadays should learn critical thinking skills, critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, computational thinking skills, creativity, effective communication and collaboration. These are very, very, very important skills that today's children should be exposed to. Okay, so after that, we talk about character quality. This quality also is very, very important. It says, how students approach their changing environments? How can they become self-aware? How can they become self-conscious? How can they understand the environment that they live in it? 
how can they adopt the environment that you live in to adaptation, the compassion, okay? How should an approach their changing environment? Because technology is now increasing in an exponential rate. So we need to have a solution, a long lasting solution that will help today's learners to adopt in any environment they are exposed to. That is very, very important, okay? So how students approach the, the changing environment by learning skill, such as curiosity, initiative, persistency, adaptability, leadership skills, and social cultural skills. These are very foundational. These are very, very foundational. And these are very, very important for the fourth industrial revolution workplaces. Okay, so from there, uh, I, um, this is the, this is what I have for you so far. Uh, the, the the industrial revolution, the samples, and more on the fourth industrial revolution, the samples, and the problem of the current education systems, what it costs, and the solution, and that is this one, how, what are the skills that are needed for a child to be prepared or be well equipped for tomorrow's job or today's jobs, because there are a lot of jobs that are yet to be exist and many children will be exposed to them, but they are not yet exist because the rate at which technology is transforming is increasing in an exponential rate. So therefore, we need to have a mechanism in order for us to remedy this situation to prepare kids to have skills that will help them survive in today and tomorrow. Uh, so far, so good. This is what I have for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Thank you so much thank for you this. Thank you so much.